Welcome back to our van plan. Uh, the next stage in our build is to build the bench seat, which is gonna run across the width of the van here in front of the bed. Um, I'd originally started by building boxing in round the wheel arches and thinking that that would be the best approach to then start the bench from or build the bench up from. Um, we went away last weekend for the first time in the van and when we did that, we're well, putting this sort of temporary frame here to help uh, separate out the luggage space from the front. Um, and this has made me question the approach with the bench seat. So I'm gonna have a bit of a think about it today and see if we still need the boxes that I've built for the wheel arches or whether we need to do something new. Now's the time to get it right. So if you're thinking about that, the other thing we need to think about is um, because our bed pulls out over the seat, we need to have the back of the seat coming up nicely to the front of the bed here, which will have a bit of plywood on front to pull it forward and to sort of edge the bed off. So we need to kind of make sure that lines up. We want a bit of an angle on the back of the bed, uh, the seat to make it comfortable. Um, we also need to think about the finished height of the seat, including the foam, the ply, and then the frame. So a bit of thinking now, and then we'll make a start. Some considerations then for the um, where the seat's gonna go. So this is the back of the seat, and this will be the back of the, uh, the seat. So we need to provide some support for the bed. So this piece here, there was a temporary fix, actually supports the fixed part of the bed. So we need to kind of maintain something like that. Um, in this gap here, the trimmer boiler is going to be, and the exhaust for the trimmer is behind this panel here. Um, so we need to build in a box for that. Um, and then over this side, I really want to not have anything running along the floor at this point, so we can put long stuff in from the rear doors right the way through to the front of the bench seat, which will run across about here. Um, so I don't really want anything um, kind of getting in the way there across the floor so we need to kind of work out how we can do that build it into a single piece here um, and then run the bench seat which will come across here and then down here somewhere like that um, so yeah a few considerations to think about first of all um, to get the structure number one to support the bed um, is the priority there and then number two to build the seat from in front of it We've done the uprights over on the right hand side, so we need to do the ones on the left here. As I said, we want to keep this part along here as open as possible so we can put some long stuff in there. The batteries are going to sit over this side, so right next to the wheel arch here. And I've built a frame for the batteries, um, which will hold them nice and snug. And then the piece of wood in the middle is the same as on the right hand side, the bigger piece, um, which I'll be able to attach uprights to, to support the bed. Um, so the plan, that's the plan, and they will all sit over there. I've also bought this ratchet strap from Screwfix, which will go underneath the whole thing and tie the batteries down tight to give a bit of extra support. Um, and then obviously all of this will get screwed into the uh, floor below to hold everything down and we'll box it in at the end once we know kind of the lie of the land with the back of the, uh, the seat. So that's next. Uh, ready anyway they're not exactly in the right place right now 
but I can adjust them once we're ready. So I need to line up this piece with the equivalent over here so that the upright's all in the same place. So I'm broadly do it by eye for now and then. We all double check with a meter rule, which I'll go and find now. Scientific. Anyway, that's broadly right. Just fine. Those really aren't going to go anywhere. And um, what I can now do is cut the upright piece, which will go here, up to here. Um, and I might do another one here as well, so there's two, possibly. I think that would probably make sense, so then we've got four in total. Uh, so I'll measure and cut those now. one is complete and we've got the battery area here I haven't screwed it into the floor yet but it is not going anywhere because those uprights are pretty solid up into the top of the bed here sorry the lights not great there you go um, holding up the fixed part of the bed at this point then we have the same over here one two and these fit to this piece down here which is screwed into the floor so that forms our fixed supporting part of the structure and as you can see let's move this that whole area straight from the back here all the way through which will be under the seat gives us a nice long area if you want to put anything long like chairs or whatever um, and then some more storage here so it's not gonna be too bad in the back here the next stage is to, for the fact if I go around this side, next thing to do is to look at the front part. So this, this beam here, we'll build a frame for the front of the seat running across the width of the van. And then we will build some supports just in front of these uprights here to support the back of the seat. Um, and then once we've got that in place, we can build the back, which will meet at the top here. So that's a bit more complicated, gonna think about that now before we, uh, before we get going. We're back in the van to continue with the seat and um, a few changes since I left you. We fitted the Truma exhaust through the wall at this point here um, and then the position the Truma where we want it. So that's all good, a bit tight this side but it should all be fine for the connections and stuff. So as I said before, that's gonna be boxed in and then over this side, um, the batteries are in place. Um, so the next thing we've looked at, first of all, is this rear piece, which is running across the back of the seat, all the way across there, um, to work out the height of the seat. Also, as I said, with a pitch on the back of the seat, this needs to come as far forward as, um, as we can get it. So the ply will rest on top and then give enough angle back up to the top there, where it, where it meets underneath the bed. And then we've also um, got this piece of wood running across here from left to right, which is the front of the seat at the bottom. Um, and we've marked exactly where we want that to be, um, allowing for 12 mil ply in front of it, which will bring it up to meet the front of the, um, the bed here. So that's all in line. And then the kitchen units will come up against that um, single piece there. So we know those two, well, we know the position of this piece, the one at the top here, is going to need to be supported by some uprights um, in front of this and we probably need to bring it a little bit further forward so I just need to work out the exact positioning there um, and then we can fix this in place we know the height of the seat and we can then build the, uh, the front frame which will run up and then across here to the side and down there with some upright supports and then some supports running front to back as well so we'll get on with that now I'm 
going to attempt to explain what I've worked out in terms of fitting the seat back um, and this width ways support as well. So there's a few things in play here. Uh, number one, we need this support beam a little bit further forward because the seat's going to be at an angle as you can see there and it needs to meet the uh, bed pull out at the top here. So we have to bring that out from the wall. Um, and then we need to provide some support for the 12 mil ply, which is this rough bit here, which will be forming the seat back running width ways. Um, and this ply needs to meet nicely with a slight little gap. This will be carpeted. Um, so it forms a nice back to the seat there, which we've got. So the way I've done this is to cut this piece of wood here, which is 44 mil square PSE wood provide enough um, spacing for the main beam to then fix through and that'll be nice and strong. That then has an angle on it here, you can see that to the angle that we want the seat back to be and then in front of it this other piece which is 34 mil square I think um, with the same angle cut into the bottom and then the slight space at the top because we don't want this to touch because this part of the bed moves out like so um, and then that allows us our 12 applied to actually then screw into this part here once it's properly fitted. So I've just test fitted those and that, that looks all right. It gives us the spacing for the widthways beam and for the rear ply. Um, and then the, the seat base ply will then sit on here as well to give it some extra strength. Um, so we'll have four of these. So we'll have this one, the one over in the corner there, and then these two close together here, which um, are built out from the battery um, storage area. And then the other thing I've done is cut my uprights now. So here's one, um, leaving a little, bring it forward a bit. So basically the cross member that's gonna run across to the front of the seat can sit and screw down into that to give it extra stability. And then exactly the same over here around the battery area. The only difference with these is I had to do some dodgy woodworking to cut out, see there, to cut out a little area just to the, uh, allow the battery to fit in a little bit better, same that side. And for this side on the batteries, it's got the um, the sink sockets and stuff like that, so I needed to provide access to those. But I think this will do it. Um, yeah, so now, now we know that, I know the height of uh, this spacer piece here, I can make sure that all the others are fitted at exactly the same height, which means the angle will be consistent um, and we can start to build out the, uh, the rear of the seat. So that's the uh, rear of the seat in place then. They've got our uprights where the ply back uh, will rest against and um, giving us a nice angle there. Right up the top, up to the top. And then this piece is the, the back of the um, seat, which is nice and sturdy there. And then we've got these uprights in at the front here, also around the battery area to give support to this. Um, and so the next thing to do now is to start thinking about the front of this bench seat. So I've got this uh, 44 mil squared piece running across here. Now over here, um, we're gonna need our gas and water to come through from under the kitchen unit, which is here, through into this space for the uh, trimmer. So what I'll probably do is cut out a piece here 
um, and then maybe slot it back in once once the pipe works in place. I don't know quite where that's going to go yet, so I'm going to make a best guess for that. Um, then we'll have some uprights, and then once we've got the uprights running across here to the top of the front of the seat, we can then do the um, bracing from the front to the back. Um, and then we can install the plywood, so we'll move uh, on to the next stage. Uh, for this upright, I've notched out um, the bottom of it so that it's going to sit over this uh, bottom piece of wood here um, because I wanted to use a nice wide bit of wood so the widthways button will sit at the front of it and the um, from the front uh, back to the front button will sit on the other side and we'll be able to screw down there. Um, I probably could have been better with the wood that I'm using. This is 44 mil square, this is obviously 38 by, I think this one's 89. Um, but I'm trying to maximize the usage of the wood that I've actually got rather than wasting it. So um, it's a little bit higgledy-piggledy but it seems to be working okay. Um, and yeah, so we've got that one in, we'll have another one over here and then one over this side. Um, and then we can start doing the front to back. That's the uh, seat frame done, um, it's nice and sturdy, we put a bit of ply on top to test it out and it's, um, yeah, I think it's about the right size, nice and deep, um, with the foam on top it will be obviously a bit higher but um, I think that's, that's all good. Um, so the next stage is to ply um, the back part, the seat base and then the front part. So we decided we we're going to use 12mm ply on the back, 18mm for the seat base and then we got some 8mm I think it is ply or 9mm ply left over we're going to use for the front here. Um, so we're going to crack on with that now um, and see how we get on. We have a seat, so not fixed in place yet, but we've got the seat base in now, 18mm um, ply, pretty heavy, but um, I think needed. So it's really comfortable, really pleased with the depth of the seat, the height and the angle on the back. Um, the cat's nice and comfy as well on the cushions we brought out to test, so we're just trying to decide what thickness foam we need really to make it super comfortable. We don't want it be, to be too high, to be honest. Um, so we need to do that. Then we need to cut the seat base because the middle part here where I'm sitting is gonna hinge open so we can access the garage area. Um, there's a fixed part over on the right here so it can pass this bed um, runner. And then this part over here is gonna be fixed as well because the kitchen units are gonna block this bit off. Um, so yeah, that's good. And then the finishes really, it's gonna be carpet up the back because again, that's gonna be hidden with cushions. The base is gonna be painted and then the front part here we'll use those kitchen tiles I think if we can get that to work to give a nice clean finish. Um, so yeah really excited by that. I'm gonna call it quits for tonight because it's dinner time and I'm starving um, and we'll get back out uh, to finish it off tomorrow. We've had a change of thinking for the um, toilet storage area so originally we were going to do a box around our Thetford porta potty that we're using. What we're going to do instead is to build a fixed box around here to make more of an L-shaped bench seat. 